I've never had an apology. The Met has wrote a statement that had an apology in it. But no one's ever kind of phoned or written or said, you know, this is terrible and we're so sorry. And I think the reason that they haven't apologised is perhaps the reason why Sir Mark won't accept the language institutional racism. It's about accountability. That's Mina Smallman. You might remember her two daughters, Nicole and Bieber, were murdered in a park in northwest London in 2020. It later came out that two Metropolitan Police officers had taken selfies with her daughter's bodies, then shared them with a bunch of other officers on a WhatsApp group. She's speaking to me because yet another damning report has been published, revealing a toxic culture within the Met Police. The author of the report, Baroness Casey, found the force to be institutionally misogynistic, racist and homophobic. Now, Louise Casey started looking into all this after Sarah Everard was kidnapped, raped and murdered by a serving Metropolitan Police officer. It shocked the country that Wayne Cousins abused his position of trust to attack and kill a young woman walking home alone. Then, when Baroness Casey was working on this report, another serving officer from the same unit, David Carrick, was arrested and exposed as a serial rapist. There were at least nine opportunities to stop him, but they were missed. So the bad apple theory no longer sticks. Baroness Casey's report now lays bare the force's failure of women and children. Crimes like rape and domestic violence are inadequately investigated, while a toxic culture allows predatory behaviour to flourish. I'm Sally Lockwood and this is the Sky News Daily. We'll hear more from Mina in just a moment. First, let's talk to our home editor, Jason Farrell. He was at the press conference with Baroness Casey when she made her findings public. Uh, Jason, good to have you with us. There's a lot to take in here. What is most striking to you? I think the most striking thing is how badly the Met is failing women and children, and particularly with uh, rape investigations. And some of the examples, and the detail in this case is really where it gets really shocking. Uh, So Louise Casey talks about the fridges, for example, that are used to keep the rape kits in. That's the medical equipment police use to collect physical evidence from rape victims. And how sometimes they're broken or strapped shut or the doors can't close without two or three people trying to cram everything inside. And when they break, like in 2022 during that heat wave, then all those tester kits got contaminated and those cases had to be dropped. And I think if if you've spoken to rape victims, as I have quite a lot over the last 18 months or so, to think of that after having given their witness statements and having gone through all of that invasiveness of of the testing and things like that, and then for that evidence to get lost and the case to be dropped for that reason is really quite shocking. Yeah. And Louise Casey said it's sort of symbolic, and I think it is symbolic, and I think that's absolutely right, because the fridge door is essentially broken on the police force, if you like, and the contamination is the sexism, it's the racism, it's the homophobia. And she's not saying that everybody is racist and sexist in the police. Far from it. She talks about their professionalism. But she talks about this being you know, institutional and, and endemic and part systematic and it's accepted I think is the problem and the police force has been too defensive in the past and she's very conscious of the fact that there have been a number of reviews that have pointed this out but it's still there. Yeah I mean it's extremely damning to to read the words institutionally racist, misogynistic and homophobic when talking about the Met Police and of course this isn't the first time that the Met Police has been found to be institutionally racist They were also given that damning verdict 24 years ago after the murder of Stephen Lawrence. They were. And they don't don't particularly like the word institutional Mark Rowley. He's the current head of the Met. He doesn't agree with it. He thinks it's ambiguous, it's political. And, you know, maybe this is semantics. I'm not sure. I can understand his trying to get the message to his fellow officers that he doesn't think everybody among them is racist. And I think that that's not what Louise Casey is saying either. Um, but I think 
what she doesn't want is for them to cherry pick certain aspects of this report. Maybe it's more important that that he does take on the recommendations than necessarily accept the language. But if you've got within there a group of people, and it doesn't have to be a massive group of people, but enough people who are prepared to turn a blind eye where, you know, there could be a dozen or so people who know about someone having a tendency to be misogynistic and at the very least not discouraging it, then that's a cultural problem. Yeah, certainly those two instances, the first one with Wayne Cousins where he kidnapped, raped and murdered Sarah Everard and then David Carrick, you know, arrested and revealed as a serial rapist. Those two instances shock the country, but it was the fact that there were red flags with both of those individuals. There were at least nine opportunities to stop David Carrick, yet neither of them were rooted out. And and that is the essence of what Louise Casey has been investigating, is, is the culture within the Met, as you say, that, that allowed these individuals to thrive. Yeah, and it goes... It goes to the kind of core of it, really, because it's from the it's from the worst case scenario, which is Wayne Cousins, to you know the really small things. And I think we we have to remind ourselves that one good thing about this review is that these are police officers who are blowing the whistle. Part of the thing that they're blowing the whistle on is the fact that they don't feel comfortable blowing the whistle. But at least they're talking to Louise Casey. And I can understand why, because she's very forthright, she's very honest, and she's good at this kind of thing. The police isn't. We'll speak to Jason more in just a minute. But let's go back to Mina Smallman now, who you heard earlier in the episode. Louise Casey went to meet her to hear firsthand how it felt when she was told police officers had taken selfies with her daughter's bodies. Actually, I don't know how to explain it. We were traumatised anyway. And then to have that, I I didn't have words. And one of the things I said to Louise was, you know, any strides, big strides that we've made recently has been because of the tenacity of victims. And it shouldn't be up to the victims to have enough in the tank to be able to take on a huge institution. It shouldn't. But, you know, women who've been raped, domestic violence, you know, keep coming forward to tell their stories. And it takes courage to speak out. You know, it really does. It does it's not easy to do that. And the irony of it is that the police rely on the community to be grasses, but they don't allow people to tell the truth. When you found out that those two Metropolitan Police officers had taken selfies at the murder scene of your two mm. daughters, mm. what did you what did you think? And and have you ever had an apology or any sort of explanation as to what they were doing? Mm. No, I, I've never had an apology. They've uh, the Met has wrote a statement that had an apology in it. But no one's ever kind of phoned or written or said, you know, this is terrible and we're so sorry. No, nothing. And I think that the reason that they haven't apologised is perhaps the reason why Sir Mark won't accept the language institutional racism. It's about accountability. This culture didn't happen overnight. It's incremental. So you get away with a bit, then you get away with a bit more. And that's where you end up with, this is just the one group that we knew of, 33 in the group. 33 in the WhatsApp group? Yes. That, where the photo, photographs yes. of your daughters were yes. shared? Right. Yeah, plus two civilians, a doctor and a dentist. Obviously, you've been through a real ordeal. I mean, that doesn't even begin to describe what you've been through. At what point did you see perhaps you know, the, the positive version of the Metropolitan Police, because, of course, there are also a, a large number of officers who are hardworking, good people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. I, we had the full spectrum. We had the shining example of the Metropolitan Police. That was the team that were investigating murder. I need to share this story with you because it kind of sums up for me 
what is good policing. When the girls were murdered, because we knew they had blankets, cushions, all of those things, but they weren't there. And so they'd worked out he must have put it all in a bundle and put it by the bins. Now, the rangers in the park, they're very good at cleaning up the space. So they'd said, you know, has there been a pickup or a collection since? And they said, yes. Now, the rubbish had gone to one of five tips. And it was the job of one of the team, David, to go through all the rubbish bags. He did that, was it five days or six days of it? Now, for those of us who have an imagination, you can just imagine what he had to trawl through. Bless him, he found it. He found it. That is, that is dedication. That is the example you know, that team. And how upset were those officers who oh. who did a really great job for your family? How upset were they about what happened to you? They were devastated. Devastated. You know, they they took on, and, and that's the truth, that the good police officers will be overcompensating now for the bad ones. You know, because if you're honest and true and you join an organisation that that is primarily about people and protecting people, you care. And so they will be carrying the burden. In addition to an incredibly difficult job, they now will be carrying the burden for all of these police officers who have done all of these heinous crimes. Do you think the Met Police is capable of reform now, of sorting out these cultural issues when it comes to sexism, homophobia, racism? We haven't got a choice, have we? What else is, what's the other alternative? Well, the other alternative is to dismantle the force altogether, which Louise Casey has said she doesn't think would be helpful at this stage, that they're better off spending that energy in, in trying to reform what they've got. Yeah. Would I you, agree. And, and do you think they can? I, ha- I can't not think they can't. You know, everything is worth changing. All good institutions know that after a time... You have to review your way of operating and make it better. You can always make something better. And this was a poison chalice, you know, Sir Mark. Conversations I've had with him, he, you know, I've been very frank and he's been honest, you know, very humble but today, I think he's he's made a big clangor for himself because everything that he's said and tried to put into action has been brought into question now because he will not accept the terminology of institutional racism. And all black families and people of colour aren't interested in his semantics. This is... This is a eureka moment for him to say, I get it. I get it. And I want you to know that I understand what you've gone through. That will jar with some people. Some people, they will not like what I've just said. Tough. You wanted to know what it feels like to be black? Now you know. Now you know. How do you think the Met goes about winning the trust of black Londoners, but also trying to win the trust now of London's women. Yeah, it's going to take hard work. But just simple things like people having the appropriate training for the specific circumstances. You know, not all police constabularies have rape units and they need it. It needs, you know, this is a serious crime. And the saddest thing, no one really gets it until it happens to you in your family. It shouldn't be that way. You know, I'm not campaigning just for women of colour, their safety. I'm campaigning for all women and girls. 
of all colours, all religions, because that's what good human beings do. And and so I have to believe, I have to. But I, I really do think I'm hoping and praying, and I will pray, and I will phone him later, and I'm going to say, you know you dropped a clangor today. So you're going to phone Mark Rowley later? Yes. What did you want to say to him? I just, you know, I want to say to him, you have got to know you did you did yourself no good today. You know, I can't defend you. I won't defend you. Go away and think about this. I'm, you know, thinking, did someone put pressure on him? Is it that that thing that if you accept blame, you're guilty of something? But the impact it would make for him to say, yes, we we have institutional racism within our, within our, our you know, institution and, and we're going to work on that. Cost him nothing. So I'm, I'm going to be a good priest and like a chaplain, I'm going to phone him up and we're going to have a heart to heart um, because we're all flawed. No one's perfect. So I'm going to walk him through the reasons why that doesn't work. Well, look, if he doesn't pick up, he can always listen to this podcast. Yeah. (laughs) Mina, thanks so much for speaking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, Jason, it certainly feels there's a long way to go when it comes to restoring trust with the women of London and with black Londoners as well, which is also identified in this report. What recommendations did Baroness Casey make? Yeah, we should just mention, you know, on black Londoners and stop and search and the fact that a black person is much more likely um, to be handcuffed, to to have um, violence used against them um, in in, in a police situation. So, you know, that is that is a, a very important part of of, of what they're talking about. And I think the key recommendation, so re, reinvesting in and reprioritizing frontline policing, and that's one point was made is sometimes the closer you get to public facing police officers, the worse the situation is in terms of um, what, what, you know, where the way in which the, the police officers are regulated and, and so on. On the protection of women, it's actually about having a new strategy and having dedicated women's protection service and this is specialist officers. Too often, Louise Casey says, it's someone who doesn't have that specialism who's dealing with those kind of things. And then I think, you know, cleaning itself up by bringing in an independent team to run the misconduct system is another really important one. And end-to-end vetting, she describes. So you're not just vetted once when you come in. And I think that's quite important, actually, because I was talking to one of the victims of David Carrick, the serial rapist who was also a police officer. And Her point was that if you looked at his Facebook, if you looked at his social media, you probably could have worked out the kind of man he was. And that kind of vetting didn't happen. Whether he was vetted when he first joined the force is one thing. But this kind of end-to-end vetting uh, that is talked about in this review, I think that's something that a lot of victims would would follow. So, you know, those, those are essentially the tenets, the key recommendations of this report and 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 i would say the overriding theme of it is don't be defensive you know don't cherry pick from this this has got to be wholesale you've got to do this in full um otherwise it'll just be like the responses to all the previous reports before it it won't be effective and other forces are said to be under pressure uh, too uh, i know this is something you've been looking into jason do you think that this Casey review will force other forces to look carefully at their own culture? Well, I've asked, I said to Louise Casey, do you think there should be a Louise Casey, not not her to do it, but should there be a Louise Casey review everywhere else in every other force? And and her view is yes, there there should be. Because to answer your question, I have no idea. I think the Met maybe does have specific problems in certain areas because it's dealing with, it's a massive force and it's dealing with all sorts of different issues that maybe other forces don't face. But a lot of this report might well be applicable to other forces. 
And as you say, they are now doing an investigation into anyone with any sort of history of offending within the Met Police. And Baroness Casey has said, you know, she can't rule out the possibility that there there will be other Wayne Cousins and David Carricks in the force once they've done these investigations. No, and and nor could anybody. Um, and that's the thing. I, you know, Mark Rowley was asked by Kay Burley about that and he kind of avoided the question. The, the mayor of London was asked the same question and said he couldn't say it. And, and this is the problem. No one can actually yet say. And I think Louise Casey will only be happy with the success of her review if in a year or two years' time, someone is able to say, yes, absolutely. I come back to the point that she was really conscious that of all the previous reviews, she talked about hollow promises, mm. about a failure to accept the truth, about defensiveness. And she just wants, more than anything I could tell from, from listening to her, she just wants the police to take this one on the chin. My thanks to Jason Farrell and Mina Smallman and to you for listening to the Sky News Daily with me, Sally Lockwood. This episode was produced by Rosie Gillett. Our editor is Philly Beaumont.